dress up like Batman Go and put my cape on And let everybody know the corners they ain't safe on Like 28th door up in Hell's Kitchen Satan try to stop Christ failed mission So let's see what else he has in store Gather in the Justice League on the 10th floor Every person in the Trinity applaud them all All the evil doers, God destroys them all All the evil spirits that's what I meant to say, Alfred, go get my Christ mobile. That's what I meant today. I pray his tranquility's felt. Call Ephesians, my holy trinity, utility belt. I, flying through the sky, my jet engine smoking. You hear about these bad guys, your attention's broken. Your reign was shorter than the penguin. Mission over, your flow poison ivy. You must be a joker with three of a kind. Trying to bluff me in poker You is two-faced, yeah Trust I went over Your head just a little bit Just to fiddle with your emotions Keep your mind in loops These are minor loops They trying to find a loot Break the shackles off and I run to the booth Look at this cat woman Got you jumping through hoops Look like a fool I'm back in the booth Time to get to the back cave And lace up your boots Straighten up your suit we back to the mission now The mission serving Christ I never let that mission down Who sent them in there Pad and pencil in there 10,000 square feet Or a tenth of a square You living in pairs If you living in fear With a soft touch Like a woman's feminine care So the gentleman's here He dropped the prince of the air All I did Was shine a spotlight in the air And across the clouds I seen P.O.P. And the abbreviation stood for Prince of Peace This rap jam is like the first Batman The devil drops a million dollars on the city And Gotham's greed creates a problem in the city Cause he drops the money but disguises the gas Due to that they allow him to slide in his stash Joker gets to his hot air balloon so he can ride it and laugh Right before the scene where the bat jet slides in the trash The next scene you see Batman rise from the ash Trying to stop crime in the flash and his timing is fast Your rhyming get thrashed cause I'm right and decent I flow like the best Batman, Michael Keaton He reveals to me my ability, every skill for me Real unique style whether it's lyrically, mentally, literally I'm built to leap builders in a single bow He's built to complete builders, he's the king of thou The king of thee, the king of crowns, the king of kings his kingdom wow, he's the cornerstone, he makes the building bow, he's the cornerstone, never let the building down, he's the foundation, wherever the building's found, even the ground's waiting for him to build his town, up from the ground up and make the building sound, that's groundbreaking, what a familiar sound, sounds like soundproof, they starting to feel that sound, who gon' praise him till they die, money can't buy you to a place in the sky, See if cash gets you into heaven or not Having guap, profit you little Like Bane, your figure's all blown up in vain And the same as him, you're still losing it in Tell these jokers, it ain't a game when he come You a joker, I got a king, you can't over Trump Leave it to the trinity to handle my arch enemy Lock him in the Asylum Penitentiary Over Green, they'll show you what a friend of me is Okay, I got a question, so riddle me this When Paul got knocked off his horse and axe Whose light did he see? Riddle me that, everyone wildin' It's like a crazy house Put the whole world in the mental asylum But if you read the papers, guess who made the front page? A Christian savior He's in the headlines, bread and red wine Read your kids John 3, 16 at bedtime No Arkham or Salem, being bad off in the land them In some trouble, in a coffin, a plant them in some rubble Where I'm from, they call it Gotham City If the cross wasn't in the middle, it would be Goham City You could put the world up on that So tell bat girl, I no longer have girls up to bat I'm not trying to make it to first base or hit a home run with my side chicks Ripping, running, out robbing with my side kicks Holy great words out the good book, Batman I'm saved, that's a good look, Batman In the end, things work out fine Saving the world, one repentance at a time Our lives are getting better 
Like they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure So we'll rediscover what God glorified Satan will let go to the dumpster So on one hand, we're filthy in our deeds Will sin and sin stinking filthy indeed On the other hand, I'm being cleansed on that hand Watch Bruce Wayne turn into Batman I've been cleansed of my sins Watch Bruce Wayne turn into Batman No longer cold hearted, crying frozen teardrops I'm Mr. Freeze Okay, Mr. Freeze! Put your hands on your head! Great! Saving and spreading the gospel to the world. Batman's story retold. The Batman Verse If you've ever tried to do devotions as a family, you know that it can be a challenge. There never seems to be a convenient time to do it. There always seem to be other things vying for your attention. It can be hard to know what passages to read, and it can be hard to hold your kids' attention. When your kids range in age from 20 to 6 years old like mine do, you have the additional challenge of trying to talk about the Bible on a level the teenagers can benefit from, while also appealing to the younger kids. A few weeks ago, our family began memorizing a passage of scripture that speaks about overcoming evil, and to help my little Jojo remember it, I nicknamed it the Batman Verse. Today I want to share the Batman Verse with you. The Batman Verse is Romans 12.21. Please read it with me. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's a relatively simple verse, and it's very easy to memorize. It contains a negative command followed by a positive one. Let's begin by looking at the negative command, do not be overcome by evil. The Bible repeatedly makes it clear that we are living in a dark world ruled by spiritual forces that are hostile to God and His kingdom. Ephesians 6.12 reminds us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Like Batman, we are called to take our stand against the forces of evil. The very next verse of Ephesians tells us to put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Like Batman, we must fight the forces of evil because no one else can. 2 Corinthians 4.4 tells us that the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. The people of this world are blind held captive by the evil one, yet completely unaware of their own captivity. They have no power, no will, no desire to resist, because they are blind to the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Darkness and defeat is all they have ever known. Like Batman, we have the power to resist the spiritual forces of evil. James 4.7 assures us that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. And in 2 Corinthians 10.5, Paul describes our ongoing struggle to demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We're fighting a battle for the hearts and minds of those who are held captive by the evil one, so we must take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Of course, as with Batman, it can often feel like we're fighting a losing battle. No matter how many times Batman defeats his rogues gallery of villains, sending them to jail or to Arkham Asylum, they always seem to escape to wreak havoc once again. In the same way, we as Christians often look around and get the sense that we are continually losing ground in our war against the evil one. First, we seem to be losing the culture war. Not only is our culture increasingly rejecting biblical morality, it is actually attacking that morality as hateful and cruel. To say that it is wrong to kill an unborn child is to wage a war on women. To say that the Bible calls homosexuality a sin is to spread a message of hate and intolerance. To spread the good news about Jesus Christ is to proselytize, which is seen as arrogantly claiming that we have a monopoly on truth. 
the church has largely lost its ability to act as the conscience of this nation. Instead, we are becoming a pariah, which is viewed as being on the wrong side of history, stubbornly clinging to an outmoded morality and an us-versus-them mentality. Worst of all, it can seem that we lose ground in the culture war no matter what we do. If we remain quiet, choosing not to oppose this spiritual drift, our nation just keeps sliding down the slippery slope. Yet if we actively oppose the slide, we get painted as backward fundamentalists or unloving bigots. In addition to losing the culture war, it can often seem like we're losing our own personal battles. We want to be pure, yet we sometimes look at sexual images on TV or the computer. We want to be thankful and content with what God has given us, yet we can't seem to stop thinking about the stuff we don't have. We want to have strong families, but we can't seem to stop fighting with each other. We want to be good witnesses for Christ, yet we always seem to say the wrong thing, or we find ourselves too intimidated to say anything at all. When the Batman verse tells us, do not be overcome by evil, I think it is speaking not only about our external battle against the forces of this dark world, but also about our internal battle against our own evil impulses. That's why I call this the Batman verse and not the Superman verse. You see, Superman is not human. He's superhuman. He's from a distant planet. He has godlike powers. He fights for truth, justice, and the American way. He's squeaky clean. Batman, on the other hand, is all too human. He has no superpowers. He has simply disciplined himself to become a weapon in the fight against evil. Scarred by the murder of his parents, he fights for vengeance, and he continually struggles to keep his vengefulness under control. He refuses to kill even the vilest of criminals and will not even carry a gun, but he lives on the edge of sanity. In this brief clip from a Batman cartoon, we see Alfred reflecting on how Batman has struggled not to become what he fights against. Vengeance blackens the soul, Bruce. I always feared you would become that which you fought against. You walk the edge of that abyss every night. But you haven't fallen in, and I thank heaven for that. Like Batman, we must wage our war against evil without becoming the thing we fight against. We must be careful not to wage war as the world does. Doing so only blackens the soul. Not only must we not be overcome by the evil of this world, we must not be overcome by the evil within ourselves. And the only way to do that is to overcome evil with good. If we look again at some of these passages that talk about the spiritual war we wage, we'll see an interesting pattern. Here's the immediate context of the Batman verse. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here we see that overcoming evil with good actually means doing good even to those who do evil. It means leaving room for God's wrath, that is, trusting him enough to let him punish evildoers as he sees fit. Thus freed from the responsibility to punish evildoers ourselves, we can do good to our enemies, and thus open their eyes to the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Now let's look again at James 4, 7, which says, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Here is the immediate context of that verse. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? So whoever wants to be the world's friend becomes God's enemy. Or do you think it's without reason the scripture says that the spirit who lives in us yearns jealously, but he gives greater grace? Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, but resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, double-minded people. This passage warns us, first of all, that we have to choose sides in this war. We are either with God in overcoming this dark world, or our friendship with the world sets us in opposition to God and His kingdom. Why are we losing the culture war? 
Why do we struggle so much in our Christian lives? Because we have become too much like the world. We want to live with one foot in each world, but we can't help but choose a side. All too often we think we're building God's kingdom, but our true allegiance is to the world. James reminds us that God is jealous for us and that his grace is greater than our friendship with the world. He then calls us to submit to God. Only then are we told to resist the devil, and immediately after that we are instructed to draw near to God. Do you see the connection? We must submit ourselves to God before we can resist the devil and expect him to flee. After all, he is fleeing not from us, but from the God to whom we have drawn near. We have no power in ourselves to resist the devil. It is the God of peace who will soon crush Satan under your feet. That's another interesting passage about our battle with Satan. Let's look at the immediate context of Romans 16.20. Now I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause dissensions and obstacles contrary to the doctrine you have learned. Avoid them, for such people do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. They deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting with smooth talk and flattering words. The report of your obedience has reached everyone. Therefore, I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise about what is good, yet innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. There it is again. Paul warns the Roman Christians not to get caught up in a lot of needless controversies, but to remain obedient, wise about what is good, yet innocent about what is evil. Then he assures them that the God of peace will soon crush Satan under their feet. Do you want to crush Satan? Then don't focus on fighting Satan at all. Focus on building God's kingdom. Focus on drawing near to God. Focus not on the evil you want to destroy, but on the good you want to accomplish. All too often, we try to fight our spiritual war in the power of our flesh or using worldly strategies and tactics. We become consumed with winning, or at the very least, not letting the other side win. While we need to take a stand against the evil one, we must do it not by focusing on opposing him. The most effective way to oppose the dark forces of this world is to serve God and build his kingdom. When we get too concerned with fighting the war, it seems we are always losing ground. But when we focus on advancing God's kingdom, our victory is assured. Remember, darkness is merely the absence of light. Rather than raging against the darkness, we need to shine with the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Rather than being overcome by evil, we need to remember the Batman verse and overcome evil with good.